Hey everybody, Brian Zane here with the SmackDown Review. Now, normally, Alex, the queen of the ring, is the one hosting this segment every week. If this were AEW, I would say that she's off on assignment covering her beloved Georgia Bulldogs. But in reality, she's actually en route to Nashville right now for a trip, so I'm filling in for this week. This is actually the first episode of SmackDown I've watched since the last episode that aired on USA Network on Tuesdays. I've not watched one Fox episode before this one, so I've been trying to keep abreast of the SmackDown stuff, like by reading results and seeing what Alex has to say about it, so this is my first time watching it uh, for reals as a viewer, but don't get used to it. The show opens with Miz TV. Miz says his special guest was supposed to be Daniel Bryan, but we have not seen any sight of him since last week when he got his hair pulled out under the ring in hell by the fiend Bray Wyatt. Uh, the Firefly Funhouse appears on the screen and uh, Daniel's picture's on the wall now. He is the new face in the Firefly Funhouse, as it were. Uh, the word of the day is family. Uh, Bray says he used to have a family. We didn't get like, a jump cut of the old Wyatt family when it had Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan, and Daniel Bryan for the two weeks he was part of the Wyatt family. So we see that for a second. He's like, now nah, I'm going to join a new family. And he holds up a picture of the Miz with his family in a frame. And so the Miz, like, power walks to the back. He calls his wife saying he's going to take the next flight home. Later on in the show, we actually see him looking around. He sees uh, a spooky red room. He goes into it, and he sees the same framed picture. But now Bray Wyatt has been photoshopped onto it. Then Bray, not as the fiend, just regular red sweater wearing Bray Wyatt, jumps him with the sister Abigail and walks off. And so now we actually have an announcement. Finally, we have some match announcements for TLC, folks, that The Miz is going to be taking on regular Bray Wyatt in a match at TLC. And it's not for the title. There's no stipulation, as of right now at least. And it's not The Fiend Bray Wyatt. According to the match graphic, it's, you know, kids show Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt, which is really interesting. I don't think, you know... Maybe you shouldn't have Bray wrestles The Fiend literally every time he's out there wrestling. Maybe you have regular Bray Wyatt in matches, but it seems like a really weird departure. I think it's the first time we've ever seen, you know, Sweater Bray get physical like he did this week. So that was kind of a surprise to me. Um, you know, where's Daniel Bryan? We have not seen hide nor hair of him, uh, no pun intended there. Uh, the, the fact that he's not here at all tonight leads me to believe he's probably going to show up in that match with The Miz uh, at TLC. Meanwhile, our first match sees Mandy Rose versus is Alexa Bliss, who's back from injury. She made the save last week after Nikki Cross's match with Sonya Deville. Uh, referee for this match is Jessica Carter, who moved up from NXT. She is SmackDown's first ever full-time female referee, so congratulations to her. Uh, Mandy, at one point in the match, rips out Alexa's fake eyelashes, which is pretty funny. Uh, Bliss ultimately wins with Twisted Bliss after Nikki intercepts a Sonya Deville interference attempt. It's an okay match, and that's pretty much all I gotta say about it. Backstage and catering, the very much married Drake Maverick continues to try and flirt with Dana Brooke when Elias shows up once again, sings a song. At first I thought he was playing Save Tonight by Eagle Eye Cherry, but then he was doing a song about how Batista is so much better than Drake. He, and Elias also implies that he's sleeping with Drake's wife. So then Drake slaps Elias, storms off, and then Elias then tells Dana, no, that didn't really happen. But like, why, why do they go so often now for the guys fucking somebody else's wife storyline? We've seen that three times this year in this last like three or four months. They really like that kind of thing in, on the company. It's it's really weird. Like they just that's their that's their new go-to. It's like you know how like when women cut promos on each other on the shows and like the ultimate trump card is like calling someone a bitch. Like now it seems the male equivalent is like I'm fucking your wife. Then in the ring, Drake Maverick calls out Elias for a fight. So it's kind of an unofficial match here. Elias shows up with Dana Brooke by his side, and if it's a very mismatch, Elias just looks totally dominant compared to the diminutive Drake Maverick. Even Dana Brooke gets a shot in, like throwing Drake back into the ring, and then Elias the drift away. Uh, uh, Dana gets in the ring, does the cocky one foot on the chest pin, and Elias like makes the three count to you know, the unofficial winner is Dana Brooke. Her music plays. I mean, there you go. I mean, God bless Dana for getting screen time. All it took was for you know Batista to shoot his shot on Twitter. Next match is a four-way elimination tag team match between the Lucha House Party, The Revival, Mustafa Ali and Shorty G, and Heavy Machinery. The winners will take on the New Day for the tag titles at TLC. By the way, Kofi and Biggie are at ringside doing commentary for this matchup. It's down to the Revival and Team Ali G, and great work between these four guys here. Ultimately, Shorty G eats a Shatter Machine for the Revival to win. Dash and Dawson talk some trash to Kofi and Big E after the matchup, and so great, we have another match between the New Day and the Revival coming up. Whoopee! Uh, look, 
I have no doubt it's going to be a great match at the pay-per-view, but to echo something that Alex has been saying the last couple of weeks on the SmackDown review, would it kill them to try and expand their horizons a little bit in the tag team division and go somewhere beyond like the New Day and the Revival? You've got other tag teams there, but the focus is on those teams so much, and there's other teams out there, and whether or not you think they're that great is, you know, it's your opinion, but you should at least give these other teams some kind of shot. And so I think it's just like, we've seen this match so often on TV and on pay-per-view. Let's have something a little bit different here. I know we have nothing signed for TLC. It's like this very thrown together pay-per-view, but if you're going to do that, you know, go, go crazy and give us a match we haven't seen yet. Backstage, Roman Reigns is being interviewed. He's asked what he thinks about King Corbin's promise to humiliate him by the end of the night. Roman doesn't think much of it, and he says he will embarrass King Corbin at TLC in their TLC match. We then see another hype package for the returning Sheamus, which I'm very excited about. Good to see him back in action, but I'm like, what happened with this whole like spinal stenosis thing? Is that just like gone now? Is he good? Up next, Lacey Evans taking on local talent Haley Jones. By the way, as of last week, Lacey is a babyface now, despite having absolutely no qualities about her that make her a babyface face, but we'll just see how this plays out. Haley Jones's gimmick is a ringmaster who throws shitty forearms. She's ultimately taken down with a women's right after a pretty short match. Lacey wins handily. Then after the match, Sasha Banks shows up, and after the commercial break, she talks some trash, berates Lacey, even brings up her kid, and Lacey stands up for her family, and she brings up, she really brings up a lot of her past as a Marine to, to garner some some uh, some babyface sympathy here. And afterward, they have, like, they have a stare down. Lacey goes to the women's right, and then Sasha like flinches in a major way. But Lacey was just kidding, and so she walks off, standing kind of tall here. Then she's jumped from behind by the women's champion, Bailey. So Bailey and Sasha end up standing tall at the end here. You know, I'm not saying that babyface Lacey does not work, because we've seen that happen in NXT. She was a face before she turned heel for a bit near the end of her run there, and then has been spending all of 2019 as a heel on main programming. And she's, like, you know, been pretty good in that role. I don't really know what she can offer as a babyface. I think it's going to take more than her bringing up her past as a Marine, as noble as that is, I think it's to take more than that to really make a babyface turn stick after everything fans have had to put up with her in this past year. In your main event, the big dog, Roman Reigns, taking on Dolph Ziggler. Last week, Roman destroyed Robert Roode with the announce table, and now Old Dilp is looking for revenge. It's a pretty lengthy match, goes through a couple commercial breaks. King Corbin shows up partway through to observe. In the end, though, Roman wins with the spear. Then after the match, a few of the guys from King Corbin's sedan starts beating Roman up on the outside. He starts fighting back, but the numbers game proves to be too much. Corbin and Ziggler wear him down. They cuff him, they chain him to a ring post, and then they pour wet dog food all over him. Hmm, you were this close to having something cool at that moment, and you totally blew it. Like, think of it this way. In 1998, The Undertaker crucified Steve Austin. In 2002, the NWO slammed into the Rock's ambulance with a semi-truck. And in, two, in, in 2019, Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler poured dog food all over Roman Reigns. Boy, he's going to smell bad after that, isn't he? Like I said, you could have gone a really different way with this and made it a lot more effective. You could have had Corbin and Ziggler hitting Reigns with, like, the weapons from the TLC match. Like, hit him with a table, hit him with a ladder, hit him with a chair. You could even make it TLC and stairs again this year and hit him with steel steps for all I care. But the dog food thing, the best part about this segment is how the announcers treated this so seriously as if they pilmanized his neck or something. They just poured dog food on him. That's all they did. Why is King Corbin's biggest piece of ammo in this feud the fact that Roman's nickname is the big dog? We had a guy in a dog suit a couple weeks ago. We have the dog food spot this week. If next week's show doesn't have a segment where somebody goes through the dog poop, the dog poop, the dog poop, I'm going to be severely disappointed disappointed. My final grade for this week's SmackDown is an F. Like, this is the show you want me to come back and review for every Friday night? Y'all are some sadists for that. Like, this is the A show now? This is the show that Fox is going to spend more than a billion dollars on for the next five years? After a show like this, you wonder why audiences are shrinking? It's stuff like this. Like, your biggest storyline right now is between Roman Reigns, whose connection with the audience is still kind of tenuous at this point, not 100% in favor of him, and King Corbin, who excels in the mid-card, but absolutely fails to deliver delivered in any kind of conceivable way in the main event scene. Like, that's your biggest angle right now. Uh, you know, there was not one thing about this show 
that, well, okay, no, that's not true. There was one thing about the show I liked, and that was the Fatal 4-Way match, but only after the first two teams were eliminated and they got some time to really shine there. That was the only real highlight I had about this show. Everything else is like, take it or leave it. Not one thing about the show makes me want to come back to next week and see what's going to go on. Like, Raw is better than this on average. And this week's Raw was not that great, folks. This was somehow even worse. This is what Fox is paying for. Amazing. But let me know what you thought about SmackDown this week in the comments section below, and be sure to give it a letter grade by going to the I card in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Alex will return next week to review SmackDown, but if you don't like that, don't blame her, blame the show. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.